Okay, some other um, really important characteristics when it comes to comparative planetology are planets orbital characteristics. So we've talked about these in relation to the moon and the earth. Um, the one, uh, the first one is orbital period. That's just the time that a planet takes to orbit the sun. Uh, and then the rotation period, the time to spin once on uh, its axis. So you can think of these as a planet's year and a planet's day. And another interesting orbital characteristic to pay attention to as we compare planets is their uh, orbital tilt. So that's how much is their entire orbit um, tilted away from the overall plane of the rest of the solar system. Uh, which one of these models is the best physical model that you would use to describe the orbital tilt of all the planets? All right, so I'm seeing most votes for A, which is exactly right. So the orbital tilt of most of the planets is very small. Uh, Mercury has a little bit more of an orbital tilt than the other planets do, but for the most part, they are all what we call coplanar. They're all orbiting in the same plane of motion around the sun. And so grooves on a CD would be the best model for that. If you were also to consider some of the other objects, for example, uh, asteroids and comets, which might have more irregular orbits, then you might think that C, a space age mobile looks a little bit more appropriate. But here, um, the planets would be all coplanar. And in this particular uh, image, it seems like none of those are in the same orbital plane. So a more appropriate model, I guess, would be to put the CD inside the space age mobile. And now we've got the whole solar system accounted for. So uh, here's what it actually looks like. Right. So all the blue traces are the orbits of the planets. The red traces here are the orbits of some uh, the largest uh, dwarf planets. So Pluto, Ceres, Eris, Haumea, and Makemake. And you can see that with um, so Ceres uh, is within the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, and its orbit is fairly similar to the orbit of one of the planets. Pluto is a little bit more tilted from the orbital plane than any of the other planets. And then Eris is like extremely tilted. And so when we look at this, we can see that the, the regular pattern in the planets and the irregular pattern in the dwarf planets might be able to give us a clue as to how these objects formed and when they formed and what types of interactions might have happened to them since they formed to put them in these strange orbits. Okay, so we'll come back to this at the end of class, why all these planets are in the same plane. 